medcram.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Now, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, I've been in the intensive care unit for about 10 days taking care of patients. There's been about one or two people with COVID, so that's a little bit higher than what I'm normally used to seeing. I know we're all kind of filled up with hearing about COVID-19, but I wanted to talk to you today about something that we've talked to you about before, the innate immune system and hydrotherapy that is starting to catch on in terms of the innate immune system. So I wanted to do an update regarding this. First of all, let's take a look at the numbers and see what's going on right now with the Omicron subvariants. So what we have here at the bottom are dates starting here in February and going all the way to May 7th here, 2022. And these are all Omicron variants, but they're subvariants. So you can see early on, we had the BA.1.1 dominating. And then as of late, there's this new, they believe more infectious subvariant of Omicron called BA.2.12.1. And it seems as though this lineage is increasing, especially in the northeast portion of the United States. So those who are interested will know that some of these numbers are going up. And recently, Dr. Eric Topol, who we've actually had on here on MedCram, was on CNN to discuss what's going around the country. Now, Dr. Eric Topol is the head researcher and professor of molecular biology at Scripps Institute in La Jolla, California. Let's listen to what he had to say. Absolutely. So, Doctor, the Biden administration is issuing a new warning that the U.S. could potentially see 100 million COVID-19 infections this fall and winter if Congress doesn't approve more money to fight the coronavirus. Do you agree with that prediction? And what do people need to be doing right now to avoid infection, hospitalization or perhaps worse? Right. Well, uh, if we've learned anything, as you know, Rosemary, this virus is quite unpredictable. Uh, the 100 million cases in the late fall or winter is certainly possible. Uh, we saw almost twice as many in the worst monstrous Omicron wave um, that was really hit us in the first part of this year. Uh, right now, though, we're seeing a significant increase in cases, and we're starting to see some substantial increase in hospitalizations. And it's because of this variant that's about to become dominant, this so-called BA2 Dot one two dot one, which is a subvariant of uh, an Omicron, but it's a lot more transmissible than Omicron or the BA two, and so we are likely going to see substantial number of cases. You know, the recent days today was eighty five thousand. We had a few days last week of a hundred thousand, and that's just the confirmed cases. And we know so many people either don't get tested or have rapid tests, so that could be a half a million. Uh, cases a day or even up to a million for all we know. So it seems as though there is going to be a swell coming up later this year in the winter time and early next year. The question is, is what can we do now to prepare for that? And if you listen to the next question that the interviewer asks, it's going to be very interesting and it's going to take you back to some of the videos that we did early in the pandemic. And for those of you who watch MedCram regularly, this should not come as a surprise. Yeah, it's a good point. And doctor, some of us have never been infected with COVID while others appear to get infected multiple times. And some of those infections are asymptomatic while others develop such serious symptoms, they end in death. What more are we learning about that extraordinary scope of reaction to COVID and why some people never get it at all? Right, well, the spectrum about getting severe COVID is where there have been some breakthroughs in genetics and interferon, the innate immune pathway, the first line of defense, it is um, altered in some people, making them either more susceptible or, or less. So we talked about this early in the pandemic, early in 2020, we talked about the innate immune system and specifically how increasing the body temperature could enhance the immune system, and specifically the innate immune system. If you want more information about that, I would highly recommend looking at MedCram COVID-19 update 46 and 47, but also 132, because it's there that we talked about why kids don't seem to be admitted to the hospital or be as sick as adults in COVID-19. Watch. Have you ever wondered why kids don't go to the hospital as often as adults do in terms of COVID-19? 
Well, I thought this was a very interesting article that was put out by Nature Biotechnology titled Pre-Activated Antiviral Innate Immunity in the Upper Airways Controls Early SARS-CoV-2 Infection in Children. And I think this article may actually give us some pretty good information as to what we can do to improve our immune system. As we've talked about in previous videos, we tried to see what it was that we could do that might prevent hospitalization. And the key to that is the immune system and how there are two aspects to the immune system, the innate immune system on the left and the adaptive immune system on the right. Now, the innate immune system, which includes things like macrophages and natural killer cells, all work together to eat up or phagocytize the viral particles and viruses that infect people early on. The innate immune system is usually very strong in young children and gets weaker with age. Interferon is a product of the innate immune system. Interferon is very important in terms of fighting SARS-CoV-2 infection. And so anything that we can do to improve interferon levels would be important. So what you see here in this graph on the left side, which is the amount of interferon alpha-2 and the activity on the right, is that as the critical nature of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 gets worse, that's associated with a lower amount or level or activity of interferon. You can see here on the black bar the baseline secretion of interferon. And with mild disease, we see a very large increase in interferon levels and activity here in the blue box. As it gets more severe and then even critical in the red, we can see there that there's almost no interferon activity in those situations. So this leads us to believe that interferon levels can basically predict the outcomes of COVID-19. So what they did in this study was they looked at the upper respiratory tract cells in not only children and adults, but also in children that were infected with SARS-CoV-2 and children that were not infected with SARS-CoV-2. And what they found was that children displayed higher basal expression of relevant pattern recognition receptors that were involved with interferon and resulting in a stronger innate antiviral responses upon SARS-CoV-2. In the article, they say, it's been shown that an early cell intrinsic innate immune response mediated by pattern recognition receptors and the type 1 and type 3 interferon system, it is crucial for the successful control of SARS-CoV-2 infection. In line with these observations, recent studies compared adults and children with severe COVID-19 or those presenting to an emergency department and described an impaired interferon response in pediatric COVID-19. However, the molecular mechanisms protecting against COVID-19 in younger age groups, particularly in those with no or only mild to moderate symptoms, remains unknown. And that was the purpose of this paper. So what they found using molecular techniques were higher levels of genes and their proteins in the epithelial cells in the upper airway in children as opposed to adults. And they say here that this result suggests an increased ability of the respiratory mucosa of children to respond to viral infections, which is further supported by the highly increased amounts of innate immune cells in the upper airways. So that key there is that there were more innate immune cells. Furthermore, they say that following virus sensing, there was signaling through a number of different expression and antiviral effectors such that antiviral cytokines, such as interferon beta and interferon lambda. So these interferons act on epithelial cells in a autocrine and paracrine manner. That means on themselves and also on cells around them. And all of this basically was shown to exhibit strong antiviral activity against SARS-CoV-2. Now, this is very important. In the discussion, they say that our data provides clear evidence that the epithelia and immune cells of the upper airways or the nose of children are pre-activated and primed for virus sensing. This is likely a general feature of the children's mucosal immune response, but of particularly relevance for SARS-CoV-2. Very recently, sCRNA sequencing of fibroblasts infected with chikungunya virus showed an extremely narrow window of opportunity for the cells to express interferons before viral protein production shuts off the antiviral system. You see here that there are viral proteins which can actually shut down the body's antiviral system, and this is exactly what happens with SARS-CoV-2. 
This likely also explains the differences between SARS-CoV-2 and other respiratory viruses, including respiratory syncytial virus, influenza A virus, or SARS-CoV, in terms of the induced host response. Now notice that SARS-CoV-2 is characterized by extensive intracellular replication and a remarkable absence of interferon production and secretion. And I think this is the key statement right here that in SARS-CoV-2, where there should be a prolific response of interferon, there isn't. And that's important because it says here, on the other hand, SARS-CoV-2 is highly sensitive to treatment with interferons before or after infection, as shown in lung epithelial cells, even more so than SARS-CoV. Wow, so what did we learn here? We learned that the innate immune system is critical in suppressing and getting rid of these viral infections. In fact, it may be the reason why SARS-CoV-2 is successful at causing severe diseases because it's able to shut down the innate immune system. And remember, the innate immune system is not dependent on the variant. So the innate immune system is going to work just as well on Delta as it is on Omicron, as it is on the sub Omicron subvariants. It, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the innate immune system strength that matters. So the question is, is, is there something that we can do to boost or enhance our innate immune system and specifically to increase secretion of interferon? And the answer is yes. And this is nothing new. For those of you who have been following MedCram, we talked about this way back in update 46 and 47 over a year ago. So in this paper that was published in 1988 in the Journal of Interferon Research, scientists took human subjects and subjected them to different temperatures and then measured the amount of interferon that was secreted after stimulation from monocytes. And what they found is that as core body temperature increased from 37 degrees Celsius all the way up to 39, once it hit 39, the amount of interferon released from lymphocytes after mitogen stimulation was tenfold higher than it was at 38.5. Now, this was an in vitro study, but it does seem to suggest that there are things that you can do in terms of body temperature or indeed the benefits of fever in terms of boosting that innate immune system. For those of you who want more information on this, I highly recommend Update 47. And just to briefly review, we did talk about the Nobel Prize in Medicine winner in 1927, Dr. Julius Wagner Joreg, who used fever to basically cure his patients of neurosyphilis in his Austrian psychiatric ward. But as it says here in this article that was published back in 2013 in the journal Psychiatry, other things can be used, including immersion of the individual in a hot bath or placing him in a heat cabinet. We also talked about the 1918 pandemic and also the observations of Dr. Wells Rubel, who was the medical director of the Boston Sanitarium. And these were Dr. Rubel's observations that were published, but not peer-reviewed, in a religious periodical entitled Life and Health, May 1st, 1919 where it was shown that when used with other modalities, such as sunshine, fresh air, ventilation, things of that nature, they were able to approach an infection fatality ratio of about 1.1%, whereas those in the army hospitals who used aspirin to suppress fevers and did not expose their patients to sunlight had an infection fatality ratio of 6.4%. Again, this is not a practice that I would do in lieu of other things. We like to talk about the Swiss cheese respiratory virus pandemic defense model that has been shown multiple times where each intervention that you do filters out more and more of these viral particles so that you are protected here at the end. I'd like to give credit to Ian Mackey, who created this picture, but I'd also like to add a couple more slices of cheese to this. So sleep, vitamin D, sunlight, fresh air, hydrotherapy. The more slices of cheese, the better protection you're going to have against SARS-CoV-2. And not any of these is 100% effective. So in this video, we talked about potential strategies for increasing your core body temperature and the potential positive effects on interferon for doing that, especially with COVID-19. And this practice is often referred to as hydrotherapy or hyperthermia. 
And again, even though we don't have randomized controlled trials showing the efficacy of raising core body temperature in SARS-CoV-2 briefly, this is one potential treatment that can be used in conjunction with other medical treatments while the patient is at home after diagnosis, but not sick enough to be admitted to the hospital. And of course, the other thought is, is that maybe not treating fevers aggressively unless they get over 102, that might be beneficial because here you have the innate immune system that's producing a fever and that fever is beneficial for getting rid of the virus because as we've shown that increased core body temperature can activate interferon levels. And as it turns out, this modality of treatment possibility has already been suggested and was published in Medical Hypotheses in January of 2021. Great. So a great way to get prepared is to check out the websites in the description below specifically about hydrotherapy. I think you should also check out our video that we did with Rhonda Patrick on saunas. I think that's really important. And if you like this video and you want to support us, send this video to as many people as you can. Obviously, subscribe to us and join us at medcram.com. At medcram.com, we have more videos. Specifically, we have a video series on health and optimizing your health specifically. Thanks for joining us.